Watch what you bet here on that betting show with Donnie and Teddy. Taking a look at the Raptors, looking to even that series at two, Teddy. But hey, we saw the game last time out, a late dunk in that game by Kawhi Leonard, maybe flaring up that leg injury. If we take a look today, and you're looking at the markets at SBRodds.com, open up at minus two, minus one, depending where you're shopping at. Now sitting as high as minus three across the board with a total of 217 and a half. The Bucks are 28 and 16 against the number on the road this year. 31 and 15 straight up, however, on the road. If we take a look at the Raptors here, Teddy, 23 and 26 against the number at home. 38 and 11. We saw some of the changes that Nick Nurse made, put Kawhi on Giannis. Seem to help out a lot, but once again, this guy has logged a ton of minutes. Clearly the best player on Toronto here. Can he keep it up, and can those Raptors type the series, Teddy, 2-2? Well, I mean, you ran Milwaukee's numbers. The most important number for Milwaukee is Milwaukee off a loss this season. Their longest losing streak of the entire season is two games. They went 22-1 and straight up off a loss from day one this season. 19-4 and against the spread in this role. That's worth noting, okay? And the market has certainly noted it, obviously, uh, with Toronto as chalk uh, in game three, now Milwaukee as chalk in game four. And, you know, we've seen the Bucks lose once previously in the postseason. They bounce back the next game with a 21-point blowout. Can Milwaukee win on the road? Yeah, they won four of their five, uh, five, uh, four of their five previous road games uh, here in the playoffs, all by seven points or more, mind you. And when we look at what happened on Sunday night, Milwaukee just missed shots, a bunch of them. You know, Eric Bledsoe, only three of 16. Chris Middleton, only three of 16. You know, Meritich was cold. Elisova was cold. You know, you don't win a lot of road playoff games shooting 37% from, from the floor, 31% from three-point range. You miss 11 free throws. The starting five, just 19 of 69. Milwaukee has a better game in them. The question is, does Toronto have a better game in them? Because, quite frankly, you know, it's a Raptors team that hasn't played a good game. They won in game three. They didn't. They still didn't play a good game. The supporting cast around Kawhi has been limited. You know, uh, the Siakams of the world, the Gasols of the world. And again, the stats are there. You watch them on the floor. There's a little bit of tentativeness for the Raptors, especially when it comes to taking open shots, which is something of a concern. Now, defensively, they did something very, very right. You know, John has held to 12 points on 5 of 16 shooting. Of course, he did have 23 rebounds, but he fouled out in that ball game. You know, Kawhi's quote, pretty much everyone just has to be ready to step up. And like I said before, one man can't guard him. It takes the whole team, and that's what we did. Everybody stepped up, took the challenge, and just wanted to guard him. Points were hard to come by in game three. And it ended up going over the total thanks to double overtime. I'm not convinced this game's going to have two OTs. I wouldn't be betting this one over the total. We'll talk a little bit more NBA action a little bit later in the show here, setting up the next series and how long those Warriors have a break. We'll get to that in just a few moments. But Cubs Phillies ESPN game of the night, Teddy. Cubs favored by as high as minus 40, looking at SBRodds.com right now. Sitting right around that mid-130s range, a total of 7.5, which means, Teddy, at Wrigley, that wind is blowing in. The Phillies are 28-19 on the season, 10-9 and on the road. The Cubs are 27-18 and on the year, 15-7 and at home. Eflin versus Quintana, pretty good pitching matchup that we have lined up here. Phillies getting the bounces go their way last night. Did the Cubs counter today? We'll see. Yeah, I mean, Quintana's put up solid numbers in his last couple of starts. Three runs and four hits uh, against the Brewers, six and two-thirds. Last time out, three runs and six hits in five innings against the Reds, although that game was played in a steady rain, and Quintana ended up, you know, two consecutive wild pitches because he couldn't grip the ball uh, that allowed uh, Cincy to tie the score uh, in that contest. Uh, but the bottom line is Quintana, who had some issues earlier on, appears to have solved. Some of those problems. Of course, Eflin's been pretty good, too. He had three straight dominant starting last time out. Got hit hard by the Brewers uh, after allowing just two earned runs over 20. His previous 25 innings of work. His quote after the game, just have to be better. I just got to show up better prepared to execute the game plan. Didn't really do a good job of that. The, these next four days leading up to my next start, I'm going to work hard, study, and get back on the right track. You talked about the wind blowing in. You talked about these potentially being two bet on starters. Not going to catch me betting this one up and over the total, even with both bullpens in questionable form, each pen getting hit hard last night. 
Dodgers rare appearance, Teddy, here in Tampa, heading down to the Dome. We're going to have one of those openers tonight, but the one guy that's certainly going to open for the Dodgers, that is Clayton Kershaw. 7-10 tonight, Eastern time. That's going to be on MLB Extra Innings Package. Dodgers 31-17 and for the season, 12-11 and away. The Rays are 27-17 and on the season, 12-10 and at home. Kershaw versus Wood to open. Looks like Beeks is going to come in behind him here, Teddy. But if we take a look at SBRodds.com, sitting on some of these numbers right now, Opened up around that minus 130 range. Not a lot of movement, but we do see some outlets here at minus 145. And we do see a total across the board. Teddy at eight. Dodgers down in the dome. Yeah, and, you know, Tampa's got to bounce back here from another rough series against the Yankees. They lost two out of three of the Yanks at home. They went up to the Bronx this last weekend. I lost two out of three of the Yankees on the road, including a blowout loss on Sunday. You know, Kevin Kiermaier following the defeat. It's another eye-opener, us, uh, eye-opener for us, or call it whatever you want to call it. It's just like, hey, don't be satisfied because we're in these games. We have to win these games. We got to find better ways to do that. Not going to be easy, obviously, against Kershaw, although he's been vulnerable uh, in May. You know, 4.58 ERA this month, five home runs allowed uh, in his last three starts. But did the Dodgers win for Kershaw? Yes, they've won his last 14 consecutive starts dating back to last season. His quote, you're not going to always have your best stuff. You're going to give up home runs at times, but that's the beauty of being on such a good team. The way we're going, we're going to score runs. I wouldn't disagree with that. You know, Hunter Wood hasn't given up a run yet this season, but of course, uh, the Dodgers, of course, the, the Rays lead the major leagues, the only team in the majors with an ERA under three. All that being said, the Dodgers lead the National League, 249 runs scored going into this Tuesday night affair.